This is Victor Boyd and I am Thomas Hendricks with Corona 24. We are in the backyard, a beautiful Iona bar here in Brooklyn on a lovely day. Victor, we talked before about your collection in a previous video. And today we're thinking about doing a little bit of watch hunting. How does that sound? Sounds great, looking forward to it. And before we dive in, what do we got here on tap? Uh, this is from a local brewery called KCBC, Kings County Brewers Collective. It's called Night of the Living Penguins. Very good. It's a pale ale. There we go. So Victor, we have two hunts that we wanna do today. Hunt number one, let's do big brands. I wanna focus on tool watches because that's where your collection focuses on as well. You're a bar owner here, you're banging kids around, getting your hands wet. So I wanna do two different tool watches from big brands. And then for hunt number two, let's move on to independence because I know you're passionate about those as well. No budget there, but I want you to choose two in there as well. It can be tool watches, can be not. The limit is we are gonna give you only four minutes per hunt. How does that sound? Sounds great, let's do it. All right, so hunt number one, major brands, two tool watches. We don't have a chronograph, we have the G-Shock, but I'm gonna upgrade you today to the Seiko Mini Marathon Timer, courtesy of Chrono24. <laughs> Four minutes on the clock, Victor, grab your phone and let's get rolling. All right, let's do it. And Victor, your four minutes starts now. Okay, so we're gonna go with Omega. We're okay. looking for a chronograph. We're gonna go for a classic chronograph. Okay, we're gonna I have go a feeling the, where I know where you're going. <laughs> we're gonna go with the Omega Speedmaster. Okay, and you have a lot of choice here. Are you going vintage, modern? What do you think? I'm gonna go with modern, but with a vintage feel. Okay. So we'll go modern Speedmaster, but with the Hesselite crystal. Okay, so and why the, why the Hesselite? Uh, Hesselite crystal, just because of the feel, the tones that it seems to give the dial, the look the, from it, it gives a different feel when you look at the watch to a sapphire crystal. Well, let's see what we got. Let's poke around. Let's have a look. There seems to be quite a lot. Here we, we got, got some reduced as well. You're going to do automatic. You want to stick to manual. I think we'll stick to manual and I'll stick with something with the vintage style. Okay, a little vintage inspired Speedy Pro. We got a couple of like even two registered ones here. Moonwatch coaxials Different bracelets again. and some straps. So first to make in space. We have a Tokyo edition, which we always love to see. So fantastic. Obviously with the Speedmaster, there are numerous different kinds. You don't have a budget, so you can choose that $45,000. I can choose Snoopy. the Speedy eyes on the, uh, but the problem with, in my case is I remember this Speedy when it was $10,000 or $8,000. So oh yeah, a whole six months ago. <laughs> exactly, exactly, very recently. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick with the Hessel eyes. Yep. We'll go with, uh, let's see what we've got here. We'll go with this one here. Okay, yeah, let's take a look. Classic Speedmaster Moonwatch. It's the Hesselite Stainless Steel from 2021. So it's brand new, oh, but it new, still yeah. has a very vintage feel. You look at that and it looks very similar to the Speedmasters from the 1970s, basically. Yeah. 860s, 70s, nice box collection, beautiful bracelet. Yep, 42 Classic millimeters, chronograph. manual wound, just as it should be. Exactly. Nice case back, first, first, you know, flight qualified, first watch worn on the moon. Yep. Very nice bracelet with the extension, the standard clasp in the bracelet. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Really nice watch overall. Bots, papers, everything. Everything mint seems condition. to be here in mint condition. I think this is the one. All right, let's go ahead and add that to our notepad. And we have exactly two minutes left to choose one more watch, halfway done. What are you okay. thinking? I think next thing we're going to do is maybe go with IWC. Okay, so we have a chronograph already. Where are you going with IWC? We're gonna go with IWC, we're gonna go for a dive watch. We're gonna go for the IWC Aqua Timer. Again, various materials. We have chronographs, we have non chronographs Yeah, different colors too. Yeah, what jumps out as you look through these? I mean, I like the ones both with the internal bezel, which is sort of a, a, a retro design. Some of the more modern ones are cl the classic IWC Vintage, which is from, yeah, what's again, that? internal bezel, 44 millimeter stainless steel. Very nice movement. The Ocean. Very tough watch, it looks like. Tough watches take a beating, very practical. I like to, I do scuba dive, as well as also working in industry where my, wa my hands get wet constantly yep. and I'm rinsing watches after work. So I think, let's have a look a little more. Always nice to find one on a bracelet too. And then it's easier if you want to add the rubber strap afterwards if you already have the bracelet. Yep. So let me have a look and see here. We go with a classic, I think a classic Aqua Timer with an internal rotating bezel. This one seems to be very good value under the $3,000 mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a nice sweet spot. Nice sweet spot. And they go all the way up to seven, it looks like you have a they lot do of indeed. options They do indeed. These here. are a fabulous bracelet. IWC makes a wonderful bracelet. It's very easy to adjust. There are just these small push pins in the center that you push it and instantly out pops the link. So it's very easily adjustable bracelet. You got a nice hefty case, integrated bracelet it looks like as well. Exactly, it is indeed, straight into the case, yeah. 
Very good loom, internal rotating bezel, one crown rotates the bezel. Yep, I love the rotating bezel too because it makes it, flies a little under the radar. It's a tool watch, it's very tough, but it doesn't necessarily look like your typical exactly. diver per se. Exactly, exactly. So why don't we heart that one too? All right, great. And we'll call it time with a little bit to spare. Sounds good. There we right. go. Hunt number one in the boots. Victor. I think we might have to have a little bit of KCBC. I think, no, yeah, so. I think well done. Or hunt number two. <laughs> we worked up a sweat. All right, for hunt number two, we're gonna go independent watches. Now, world's your oyster. We're gonna have four minutes on the clock. Choose two watches. Let's start right now. Okay, I'm gonna choose two watches that are independents, that are relatively recent. Okay. Uh, both are in the sort of bracket, approachable bracket, I'll say. Okay, because you not could, necessarily you approachable unlimited for budget. You could go Lauren Ferrier, you could do Gronfeld, you could do anything. Absolutely, I'd say we'll try and stay below $10,000 and ideally possibly below seven. All right, so let's hit it. I'm gonna go with, the first thing I'm gonna look at Ming watches. Ming Dean is a Malaysian photographer who's recently done some fabulous watches. Uh, we'll look at his watches for time only. Yeah, it's off to a very strong start Very well. strong start. These are watches we were talking about that sell out they sell. instantly. Approachable price points, but it's fairly small runs and they you got to have a computer algorithm to Absolutely. buy Absolutely. Very small, limited runs. It's a very unique design of dial and handset. I really like the hands that he does. I think it's a very unique setting. Uh, something like the slate dial here is yeah. fabulous. A small brand that's really carved out their own design. It's language, carved out right their away. own niche, very clean. Very simple, really nice size. Most of them are around the 38 millimeter, so very wearable for most people. Yeah, great case shape as well. It really helps the wrist. Very unique. So I think what we'll do is we will actually, let's just have a little okay, hunt so more through some more. That's the slate dial. Exactly, yeah. 1706. There's the monolith here. And a fun fact about Ming on his business cards, he says benevolent dictator for his title. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I didn't know that. That's great. Let's go with this. Let's go with the 1706 with the slate dial. Okay, nice. Right above 5,000, not, not too, too bad. Original bots, original papers from 2020. Great condition as well, and a beautiful, beautiful dial here. Very unique. Not something you're going to see on many people's wrists. All right, great. We have just over two minutes left, which just gives us just over two minutes to find our second watch, Victor. Okay. What are you thinking about? Second watch, I'm thinking of another independent, somebody who is a New York watch collector called William Massena, mm -hmm. who started his own brand recently, collaborating with various independent watchmakers. And we're going to look up uh, a chronograph. I'm going to look up the what he called the Uniracer. Okay, yep, because he just did a collaboration with uh, Unimatic as well on the dive watch side. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some chronographs. There we go. The chronographs are the big eye chronographs. There's one here. Yep. And these are the, I believe, the Universal Genève inspired ones where That's you have a exactly slightly right. larger um, three o'clock register and a slightly smaller so nine o'clock register. This is correct. Exactly. You got the big, what they call the big eye at, at three. Okay, let's see. That one's looking pretty good. What other options do we have? Let's, let's see we got some time. Let's got. take a tour. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's nice to see there's ones with Richard Habring where he's done yes, a little bit beyond the price watch. point that we were looking yep, for. And yep, I was looking 11, at the chronograph. You know, let's keep it, uh, so <laughs> let's keep I it think, democratic. I think it's telling us that we're going with the Uniracer. Let's just see if there's any more. Here, here's a, a big eye Uniracer. All right, just over Actually, a minute left. And let's this one is in the United States, so that looks good. Mm, I love the multiple colors in the subdials there. And it looks different if we go back and forth between these pictures between the daylight and his kind of studio lighting here, let's call it, looks a lot different. Yeah, very unique. Nice little pops of color. Size-wise, what are we looking at there? Size. Oh, he did a Ming collaboration as well. You could have killed a two, Ming collaboration You could have done too. four minutes and just done all <laughs> one hunt. <laughs> I think we'll go with this one. We'll go with the inner, the big eye. Yep, little uh, chronograph, basic reverse panda. Mm -hmm. It looks perfect. I think it's coming in at the right price point, just over the $3,000 mark. Uh, again, supporting local independent brand. Yep. So this is the Messina, Messina Lab Universal, Universal chronograph. chronograph. Big, big eye. You are a zero, 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 one. Nice. Well, there we go. We have just over 10 seconds left on the clock. We're going to stop it there. Perfect. And you know what? Let's have a little sip to celebrate, huh? Sounds great. Thank you. All right. So, Victor, let's pull up your favorites list and see what we selected yeah, see what for we've the got. day. So we've got a wide range here, both 
bigger brands, smaller brands, Omega, IWC, and then on the independent side, we did Ming and Messina. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your strategy and why, or all the bases we covered here. Well, I wanted to cover um, with Omega, the classic Speedmaster, the Moon Watch, is one of their iconic watches from the 1960s, obviously worn on the moon. The recent um, iterations of it, especially the Hesalite crystal, is very similar to the original. Yeah, tell They've me a little bit about that, because the there's a, a fork in the road between a a sapphire between... dyes and Hesalite dyes. Yes, I, I think that just basically what was on the watch originally, it's like some of the vintage uh, dive watches that don't have a sapphire crystal. Um, it's, it gives a slightly different look when you actually look at the watch, the reflection on the watch, the way the dial looks. So personally, because I am a fan of the vintage, I like the Hesalite crystal. Yeah, it's exactly. a little more scratched up, but it's a little, it's a little warmer more as well. Exactly, exactly. The dial is warmer, the tones are warmer with the reflection too. There we go. And what? Um, and then the IWC, tell us a little bit about it. You had a lot of options here. Why did you choose this particular one? I went with this particular one for the internal bezel, uh, classic. Interesting dive watch. I like the uh, the fact that it's obviously the price point was good under the three thousand dollar mark. The yeah. integrated bracelet, which is a very unique bracelet, very easy to adjust, and just a very clean, legible dive watch. Yeah, a lot of high contrast here. I really like how you know you have these big blocks hands that pop out against the dial, and you have even a little bit of contrast within that inner rotating bezel as well. Personally, I'm always a fan also of the white on black date, especially with yeah. the black dial watch. It's just a personal thing, but. I prefer the way it is. It it's, makes the date very easy to read, but also at the same time, it's subtle. Yeah, it's nice when they had the date wheel that matches the dial, same color as the dial. It blends in a little bit, but First, when, you, when you're looking for it, you know it's there. Yeah. All right, now let's back up a little bit and hit some independents. So we had a lot of independent brands that you know you're very well versed in this industry. Yep. Starting with Ming, why did that name come to mind? Ming came to mind because recently it's something that I've seen uh, a number of people talking about. I've had friends have talked about it. I have one or two who own one already. Mm. I haven't owned one yet. I've always been interested in the, the sort of the style and the design. Ming was a collector and a very good photographer. His aesthetics with the watch are very unique. It's a very interesting style of hand. I find it, you know, I think he's done a beautiful job. The case shape, the lugs. Yeah, very things that are on, that you only find with well, new watches. Exactly, exactly. For such a new brand to be so readily identifiable, to look at it and say, that's a Ming. I yeah. can tell it right away. I look at any one of these cases. From across from, the room, from, too. Yeah, very unique. And uh, subtle. I like it, too. I like the fact that it's a subtle, clean look. And I like that he's done a lot of... A um, little bit more adventurous things. He had like a copper dial, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, he has a lot of collaborations as well, even with your other watch on the list with Messina. Yes. But a lot of really cool things. And it's something that the collector community has really grappled onto. They've had their own uh, issues here and there with uh, quality control. Yeah. But I think overall, Ming has really, really hit on something. So they'll be just fine in the long run. I think run. he's hitting, hit on something very unique. And it seems to be a brand that's growing, doing some very interesting collaborations. Uh, so I look forward to watching what happens with Ming over the coming years. Yeah, speaking of collaborations, one of the brands that he worked with is Macinolab. I think they did a, a honey dial Ming, basically. But let's yes. talk a little bit about the universe that you yeah, have here. Yeah, Lab has done some, some very interesting watches. Again, William Macin is a collector who decided to collaborate with numerous watchmakers. And he's done them on different levels. He's done ones with Unimatic, for, mm -hmm. so for dive watches that are under $1,000 yeah. with an Italian brand. He's done the, his own version here of the Uniracer, like similar to the Universal Genève chronographs from the 1960s. Yeah, great vintage brand. Nice styles. He's done this one here with the white dial, uh, you know, white dial uh, with the black chronos. He's done others in a beautiful safari green. Yeah. That is fantastic that I would love to own personally. And very interesting. He's a, a very tasteful collector. I don't know him personally, but I know his collection and I know his sort of posts on Instagram and things that he, I see with his watches. So the kind of... Um, brands that he's bringing or styles that he's bringing back to life with unique watchmakers are wonderful. Yeah, a very informed opinion, a, a deep well to draw from. A deep well to draw from. And obviously he's got, you know, some very good contacts in the industry of watchmakers and he's able to pull together unique limited runs. Unfortunately, like a lot of these things, this is where fortunately Chrono 24 exists. A lot of these <laughs> things, they sell out rapidly, if not instantly. Yep. So if you're not lucky enough in the algorithm to get cho chosen on the day, 
you're looking to you only the only option is to buy one afterwards. Yeah, it's got to be a very good problem to have if you're an independent I maker would, where you. I would love <laughs> you to have open the up problem. the sale and then thirty seconds later. If I tapped done. if I tapped a keg of beer and it was fully sold out before I poured the first beer, that would be fantastic. It's a it's a good problem to have. <laughs> I think we'll invite some friends later and maybe see if we, how quick we can do it. Perfect. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, Victor, this has been an absolute pleasure. We chose some very good watches, both from household name brands and ones that are still up and coming. We covered a lot of bases and we just didn't spend too much money as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for having us here at Iona Bar. Thank you so much Thanks for coming. KCBC for the delicious beers. I'm Thomas DeCorner24. This is Victor Boyd. We have more videos coming out all the time. In the meantime, enjoy your watches.